Hi, Caleb. This is Dan. Check one, two, three. You there? Welcome everybody, Dan Vid alongside Mike McCracken. Glad to bring you the final district game of the year where St. Paul travels to Southern Coffee County. Turned out to be a beautiful evening up here in Southern Coffee County, Mike. Yep, it was, it's a nice evening out. It was a little breezy out today and kind of cold, but actually it feels as good now as I think it has all day. The breeze has died down and it's just a perfect night for football out here to finish up the regular season. Beautiful green football field up here at Southern Coffee County. It's going to be a rye fescue field. Mowed a little bit high, so a little bit of a slow track, but it is green and pretty. And uh, the football field looks to be in good condition after a couple of days of drizzly rain, Mark. Yeah, it's a, a little bit different look than what we see at home with that Bermuda. That uh, ryegrass, like you said, stays green, and it, it sure looks nice. They've got it painted up, got the hash marks all mowed down, and, and it really looks nice up here. It is Parents' Night here in St. Paul, so they are doing Parents' Night right now, previous to the kickoff of the ball game. St. Paul looks to, well, they already are going to win North District. They are have already cinched the number one seed in District 1 in Division 8-man-2, Mike. So the Indians have achieved one of their goals this year already. Yeah, the Indians, and, uh, you know, we've talked about it before, but it's important to remember the Indians, the schedule this year that they've had has uh, fallen so that they've not played a lot of complete games. Matter of fact, well, they play, I think, one complete game all season. And so uh, we'll see how that factors in. But uh, you've got their... Uh, looking forward as they come out of here district champs they're going to have a rough road down the road those other guys in the next district over they're all beating up on each other and got some real competition so it'll be up to st paul to uh, you know do what they can while they have the chance and try to get, out, get as much experience as they can if you want to look at the playoff brackets on any classification just get on the Casia website click on the uh, athletic and then into football and then click on to the brackets and it'll take you right to whatever division you want 6-8 all the way down to some six-man football in Kansas. St. Paul, as I said, sits number one in District 1. So next Thursday night, they have already cinched a home game, and they will play the number four seed in District 2, what looks to be a toss-up between Wakefield and Hartfield, Hartford, which will be decided after tonight, Mike. Yeah, that's a, it'll be an interesting contest next week. And uh, like I said, hopefully we get in here this week. And Southern Coffee County comes in with two wins. They beat Altoona Midway and they beat Chautauqua. Other than that, they haven't uh, had much luck the rest of the season. So, uh, you know, you hope that St. Paul can come in here and, and get out of here really with no injuries is what's going to be their primary focus tonight is to try to be as healthy as they can coming into next week to start the playoff games. Last week had a tough injury to Wilson Smith. He went down with a knee. I think it turned out about as good as you could hope for. He's going to be out a couple weeks, but uh, apparently nothing's going to require surgery on him, so that's good news. But that's one of the keys. As you get into the playoffs, you want to be obviously as health healthy as you can getting ready to go into playoffs. So as I said, next Thursday, October 31st, a Thursday night, the week nine, into the brackets, the first place finisher in District 1, which is St. Paul, will play the fourth place in District 2, which I said would be either Waverly or Hartford after tonight. If the Indians can win that home game, the higher seed will host again. That will be the Indians. We'll get to host a regional game, too, and that will be either the District 2 number 2 seed or the District 1 number 3 seed. So the Indians could possibly face a foe that they've already faced this year if the District uh, 1 number 3 seed could advance into that regional game. We'll have to see what happens down the road, Mike. Yeah, it's really a different story than what we've been used to in the past, the way they've changed things around in the playoffs, the way the districts fall, and then that, how they figure that formula. So uh, it's, it's pretty hard to, to keep up with that, especially if you're trying to think ahead of what might happen. There's a whole lot of things that can go on depending on, on uh, wins and losses all across the state. I want to thank our title sponsor, Farmers Bank, for sponsoring this game and every game. Our KW Trucking postgame show, stick around for it, as Mikey alluded to. The Indians not playing very many full games this year 
as I was listening to a radio program on the way here, Mike and I was, uh, Chet Copeland, they alluded to the fact that it's both good and bad. One thing you may avoid only playing half games is some injuries, while other teams in tougher districts or, or that's more uh, competitive at the top of the district are beating up on one another, Mike, and maybe fighting injury bugs just a little bit. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, Coach Watcher's keeping an eye on, too. Uh, it takes a, and he told us that he takes it one game at a time. You don't want to go in and underestimate anyone when you play because anything can happen. And so obviously you want to focus on the game at hand. But uh, also he's got a responsibility, I guess, to look forward a little bit and see what he can do too. So we'll see how that goes. I apologize. The announcer, the radio, or the announcer on parents' night, he's kind of loud. The speaker's right next to us. The announcer is pretty loud next to us, so if we're carrying that, or if we're getting some of that picked up off of it, he will. As soon as the game starts, it'll quit. They're going over starting lineups here. So you're listening to the our pregame show here at St. Paul versus Southern Coffee County, and we are about just about ready for kickoff. We're going to take a short break. We'll take a one minute timeout. We'll be back after this one minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul football on Hot 105. Can we turn the headset up a little bit? I can't hardly hear you. Caleb, I think he's hearing the announcer. I want to thank everybody for listening to the live stream and getting a little announcer speakers right next to us. It's going to be interesting. But it'll be okay. <laughs> Looks like uh, Southern Coffee County is going to kick off to the Indians. Well, welcome back as we get set for kickoff. Dan Vitt alongside Mike McCracken as Adam Albertini retreats back to the 10-yard line for the opening kickoff. Southern Coffee County will kick off to start this game. Adam coming off a great game last week where St. Paul did, was leading 21 to nothing before they finally got to run an offensive snap thanks to Adam running the kickoff and two punt returns back. So he didn't help his offensive yardage, but he sure Helped us all-purpose yards. 45 touchdowns on the year, Adam sets at. So a great team effort by the Indians last week getting past the Hornets of Chautauqua on Parents' Night of St. Paul. Let me get a program here, Mike, as we get set for kickoff. Albertini back deep. Squib kick going to be taken. is hit oh. by Gibb Carter. Southern yeah. Coffee County looks like it's going to be recovered as they are fighting for it. No signal yet. It bounced off of Carter and went right back to the kicker. As by surprise there, I think. Brayton Lynn, the sophomore, recovers for the Titans. So Southern Coffee County with a little momentum to start the game early here right at midfield. First and 10 for the Titans at the 40. Quick kicks, hard squib kick, went off of Carter and bounced right back to the kicker, and he recovers it at the 40. So Southern Coffee County fired up to start this ball game as they come up to the offensive line and get set. In the pistol is, is that glue, Mike? G-L-E-U-E. -E. Yeah. And it's over the head, uh, and they just dive on a big loss. It is just recovered back there by Herod, the senior, way back at the 24-yard line. So a loss of 15 yards on first down with the errant snap. So it's going to be second down and a train ride for Southern Coffee County right off the start. Indians catch a break there after that muff opening kick. Maybe we get the ball back. In the pistol, high snap, but it's recovered. Go on the carry. Oh, he's hit by, looks like to be uh, Ethan Stone King and Easton Dent, Gibb Carter. 
and they just bury him right there on the spot. So no gain on the play. It'll be third down and a mile for the Titans. So the Indians defense take that momentum right back from Southern Coffee County. A big third down play coming up here, Mike. Yeah, this would be a big play for the defense if they can make a stand here and get the ball back, give them a chance to get the offense back on the field like they wanted to to start. We're going to stick with glue, Mike. That's what it appears to be. Third down and a mile for the Titans. High snap over the head of the quarterback. Herod, he drops back to pass, rolls to his right. He's under pressure, and he just throws it away as he rolls to the right. There was a receiver out there. Number 28 was out there, Voorhees. So it just harmlessly falls incomplete. So it's going to be fourth down and 25 for the Titans back at their own 25-yard line. Good start for the Indians' defense here as Herod back in punt formation. Mike wanted to get a little clarification for me on name. Mike, appreciate that. <laughs> That's Gluey. 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 Herod with the punt is off. Good punt. Line drive punt. Taking on the fly about the 17, Mike. Albertini starts up the middle, goes to his right. Got a pursuer out there. Now he's down the sideline, knocked out of bounds about the 38-yard line. It's a good punt return by Albertini. It'll be first and 10 for the Indians from their own 37-yard line. 20-yard return. Or excuse me, yeah, 20-yard return for Albertini on the punt. First and 10 for the Indians from their own 37. Now they spot about the 37-and-a-half-yard line. About ankle-deep grass. It's not quite ankle-deep, but it's pretty deep. It's <laughs> <laughs> it is a nice, lush football field. Half of the football field, if you're looking on the live stream, is buried into the grass. So see if that affects anything. Albertini keeps it to his left. Under pressure out there. Gets a block from Dent. Now goes down the sideline, there he goes, cuts back towards the middle of the field, loses his footing, he's going to be wrapped up by a host, but not until he's all the way down to the 15-yard line. So great, great open and run by Albert, Adam Albertini. 25, or uh, excuse me, 35-yard run. First and 10 for the Indians from their own 14-yard line. 28-yard run, Mike, excuse me, giving five extra yards, trying to make up for that offense from last That's right. In the pistols, Albertini, he's going to keep it off the right side. He's got some lead blockers out there in front of him, and down to the corner of the end zone he goes. Touchdown, Indians. Two plays, and the Indians go 43 yards, and they get on the board first, and they lead with 9.56 left to go in the first period. They lead 6 to nothing. Good opening drive by the Indians, two plays and a score, so hopefully they can keep that up. You guys want to, if you follow eight-man football division too much, you want to pay attention to that District 3, Frankfurt, Axtell, and Hanover. They are all ranked. Frankfurt second, Axtell third, and Hanover fourth. The Indians lie fifth. The Indians stay undefeated, but they actually drop a spot in the rankings because of Frankfurt's win over Axtell. That district up there is loaded, and they are just beating up on one another, trying to get that top spot. It's real interesting to watch. Dent on the extra point, and Dent gets into the end zone. Now, rare. Not rare. Last week, the Indians lined up, if you uh, pay much attention to the Indians, and Murillo kicked every extra point in last week, Mike. Yeah, they did one. I think they did one two-point conversion, but that was the second team offense it, that had them out there and exactly. ran one two-pointer in. But Murillo did a good job. He was kicking them. They kicked uh, yeah, every extra point besides that and made them all. They never did have to line up to attempt a field goal, but one of those extra points, Mike, if you remember right, we got, got a penalty, holy penalty yeah. on 10 yards. So it was a, it was a pretty long kick and Morello just buried it right through there. We'll go ahead and stay here off the start of this game. Eight to nothing. Indians lead 956 left to go here in the first period. Beautiful evening here in Leroy, Kansas, Mike. Yeah, it's a nice night out here. And you look across the field there at the depth for Southern Coffee County. Looked like they're fairly evenly matched numbers wise as far as the roster goes. They didn't count on the roster and just looking on the field, but uh, don't have a lot of substitutions on the on the sidelines, but neither does St. Paul really. As Mike alluded to, Wilson Smith, one of the starters offensively and defensively, out for the Indians this week. He was hurt early on in that first quarter as he took a hit, a blow on the side of the knee from one of his own players as they was pursuing a Hornet on a tackle. Stayed down for quite a while and set out the rest of the ball game. And I think he got a little tension the next morning and decided it was a little bit of a strained MCL. So Wilson uh, hopes to be back in a couple weeks, and we hope he is too. Murillo with a kick, drive and kick. Into the end zone, touchback, 
and it'll be first and 10 for Southern Coffee County Titans at their own 15 yard line. Good start for the Indians by. Yeah, Murillo's really come around as, in his kicking game as well. Was injured early on in the season. Wasn't able, he was starting, supposed to be starting as their kicker and uh, strained a hamstring right before the season started. So he uh, had to nurse that for the first few games. But once he got that thing healed up, boy, his kicking game has really come around nice. And that's a good weapon. We've talked about the importance of the kicking game, even in eight man football. And, and Ivan Morello's really stepped in and, and done a good job in that department. First and 10 for Southern Coffee County from their own 15 yard line. If you're listening on the radio, I hope it's coming through okay. Seems to be a little bit of a double broadcast going on by someone. High snap over the head of Gooey into the end zone. He's gonna throw it late. Picked off by Albertini at the 20, down to the 15, 10. Tries to juke move, gets wrapped up and thrown down at the five yard line. So it'll be first and goal for the Indians from the Southern Coffee County five yard line as Albertini playing that free safety spot. Gluey under duress, threw it up late, tried to avoid the safety and Albertini went up and got it and ran it back to the five yard line. Gluey had the right idea, wanted to get rid of it, but he threw it up in the air instead of down to the ground, I think. And Albertini made him pay. Caleb figured it out on the radio station end, so we should be good to go now. We apologize for the little technical difficulty start of this game. If you're just now joining us or just now can understand us, it's eight to nothing. Indians lead, 948 left to go in the first period. First and goal from the five for the Indians off the interception by Albertini. He's gonna keep it off the right side. Big hole to run through and walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Indians. Adam Albertini with a five yard plunge. And Mike could have ran through that hole. It was <laughs> I could have walked through that hole. I don't do much running, but I could have made it through there, I think. 9.39 left to go in the second period, 14 to nothing. Indians lead early on here at Southern Coffee County. Last game of the regular season, Indians trying to remain perfect on the season. A little different look for the Indians. Two right, wide receivers to the right in the pistols. Albertini set to his left. It's Easton Dent. Out to the right is Chandler Bradshaw and Hayden Smith. Now Dent goes in motion. Albertini back to pass. He's going to throw it on a little cutback by Bradshaw right through his hands. Just maybe a little bit high, but if you're going to ask Bradshaw, he would say you should he could have caught that. It went through his hands, so it falls harmlessly incomplete. Extra point is no good. Indians lead 14 to nothing. 9.39 left to go here in the first period. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. This is St. Paul football on Hot 105. Welcome back. 14 to nothing. Indians lead 939 left to go here in the first period. We've got a new cameraman up here. Old Mr. Jack and all juniors helping us out here on the live stream. So I want to thank Patrick for stepping in. Old Zach Kirkpatrick couldn't make it tonight. He's been our cameraman all year long. We really appreciate these young men getting up here and helping us out. Morello with the kick. It's going to be a squib kick this time. Bounces about the 20. It's going to be picked up at the five by Gooey. And he's going to be wrapped up about the 16-yard line. It looks first and 10 for Southern Coffee County at the 16. Mike, we got to join Larry at the dinner with the coaches last night at Playmakers in Chinook. Coach Watrick made the trip up as well as Coach McCracken and the athletic trainer, Mr. Jackanaw. So it was good to have Coach Watrick on the radio show last night. And glad that uh, Larry had uh, Mike and I up and really enjoyed it. And it was a good interview with Coach Watrick. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to be there. I appreciate it. You know, them having us over there for that. Nice to get out there and get some exposure like that. First and 10 for Southern Coffee County. Trying to get something offensively going here. Herod and Gluey in the backfield. High snap. Gluey, he going to be hit by Gibb Carter. Oh, my gosh, big loss on the play. That high snap is really hurting Southern Coffee County as there's a couple of them been errant clear over the head of the quarterback. This time he tips it to himself in the air, but by that time Gibb Carter was right in the backfield and right in his face. It's going to be second down and 20. The clear. box needs to move, Dan. I don't know where we're at. And it's second. They're at the 11-yard 11 11 line. 
and the box hasn't moved. Don't ask me. And a high snap again. He's going to try it around the left side. He gets around one Indians, and good pursuit. Looks like Brad. No, it's going to be, yeah, Chase Bradshaw. Good pursuit by him. I hope he don't lose track. It's going to be third down. It's going to be a loss of another yard. It's going to be third down and 16, or excuse me, third down and 21. Thank you, Riley. Third down and 21 for Southern Coffee County. 8.56 left to go in the first period. 14 to nothing. Indians lead. In the pistol is Southern Coffee County. High snap again. Glue gets it. He rolls to his right. It's going to be sacked. Is, safety, is that a safety? It? I believe it is. I don't see yes, it. Is. Yes, it is. Safety by the Indians. Albertini back there as well as who else is back there? I think Hayden Smith might have been back there. So safety by the Indians is going to get that two points back that they missed on the conversion. So the Indians will lead 16 to nothing. It's been all Indians early on in this ball game. Mike. It sure has. Yeah, we're still just under nine minutes to go in the game or in the first quarter. And here we go again, sort of reminiscent of last week. The Indians really piling the points on early here. Coach Watrick alluded to last night that the good and the bad of, of uh, playing halftime games, not enough players to have a JV schedule this year. He said the good part of it is he's able to get some of these young kids in and rotate them in, not only on kickoff and kickoff return, but rotate them in with some of the junior, senior leadership he has and really, really teach them the Indian way on offense and defense, Mike. Yeah, and that really helps. We've talked about that, too, almost every game because they've had that opportunity to get those younger kids in. And, and it's it's paying off. It does pay off, and especially when you're not able to play a complete game and get some of the kids in with a little more playing time. At least he's getting them on the field and getting them a taste of that. And it paid off last week. Landon Beechner and uh, Hayden Smith, some of those younger kids, they got in there and they were able to put some points on the board, get a little excitement. I know he's losing a big senior class, but he's excited about his younger classes coming up. The Indians are going to lose quite a bit, be pretty young next year, and also be a little bit thinner across the board. Uh, have to see how many freshmen are out Latin, or next year. There's three freshmen out this year, and uh, not very many sophomores and juniors on the squad, but what he does is quality sophomore and juniors. So he's really looking forward to coaching these young kids. You can tell he really enjoys it with a good senior class to uh, help them along the way. Short kick. Going to be taken by the up back now. Albertini picks it up as it goes through Dent's hands. Albertini down the right sideline. Just one man to beat. Turns the gas on, and it's a touchdown return. That went through Easton Dent's legs. He tried to pick it up. Went got past him. Albertini comes up, gets it. Dent goes ahead and lays a block for him after he lets it go past him because he knew Albertini was behind him. And now the Indians are going to try for one here as Marillo or Coach Watrick holding up one finger as they get the tee out. Marillo hustles onto the field with the tee. Indians off to a good start offensively again here tonight. Mike, just like last week, was Chautopa in town. Yeah, St. Paul's run, well, they've run three offensive plays tonight and have 22 points on the board so far. Hayden Smith, or Morello sets T on the ground at the nine. Smith, the holder, did a great job last week. I hope I didn't just jinx him. Good snap, kicks up and right through there, and good as Morello buries it. And the Indians lead 23 to nothing. 8.42 left to go in the first. We'll be back after this one-minute timeout. Here goes St. Paul football and Hot 105. Welcome back. St. Paul leads 23 to nothing. 8.42 left to go in the first period here, Mike. So the Indians off to a great start. If you want to follow the Indians down through bracket play, as I said, get on Keisha.org, click on the brackets, go down to eight man two and click on the bracket. And as you'll see, there's going to be one. Every district has four teams that move on one through four. So the first round, the Indians will play a four seed from district two. So not only that, but District 1, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So there's a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, four teams in District 1 going to advance. You know, So 
we want to follow all our local teams and give them all the support we can. Murillo driving kick, kind of a spinning kick off the side of his foot, bounces at the 10. Picked up by Gooey at the five. He takes off to the right. He's going to be wrapped up about the 23-yard line. It's a nice return by the young man up to the 23. Still 8.36 to go. We're still in the first period here, Dan. That might have been Lind on the return. I'm not sure if it was two or four, Mike. Now that I look down at my roster, first and 10 for Southern Coffee County from their own 23-yard line. Hard to see the yard markers on this side. Yes, it is. Mike and I has already alluded to beautiful evening here in Southern Coffee County. Probably about 50 degrees. It's going to be a little bit wet out there, so make sure turnovers isn't a problem. Up under center this time is Gooey. Hands off to the left, but tripped off quick. And who is that? I can't see. Not sure who the ball carrier was, Mike. He makes it back to the line of scrimmage. Excuse me, as we I believe it was 13 numbers. That's Klassen if it was number 13 on the carry. That is not what the announcer sounded no, like. No, that's said. not what he said. But I think it was Herrera, number 14, Mike. 14, that's who's okay. in the tailback position right. now. Herrera is at the tailback. Gluey is up under center. He's going to try it again. No, he's, yeah, he's going to try it again off that side. Still nowhere to go for Herrera. Herrera with the carry again. It's going to be third down and 10. The Indians defense is just stifling tonight. And it'll be third down and 10 for Southern Coffee County. I was getting ready to say the same thing, Dan. That defensive line up front for St. Paul, they're really shutting them down right there in the middle. Put pressure on, too, when they get a chance in the backfield. Southern Coffee County's made an adjustment here trying to uh, uh, stop a little bit of these bad snaps. They've been in the pistol the first couple of possessions, and they have a lot of negative yards, and now they just line up, get up under center as Louie's up under center. Now motion from right to left. It's going to be a little bit of a reverse taken by number 28. Good hit. Voorhees on the carry. That's going to be Easton. Dent's going to come in there and clean that up. No, it's going to be a loss of one, so it's going to be fourth down 11. So Indians defense is got the Southern Coffee County Titans in negative yardage on night, big time yeah, offensively. We'll see what they do here on the punt. Mason Winter makes his way in on punt return. Sorry about that, Mike. No, that's, I, was, I was just going to say, see if they do like they did on the kick, try to avoid getting it to Albertini. He's the only one back. Herod, it's a good snap, and it's a good punt. Great punt by Herod. Drives Albertini back to the 21. Albertini with a head of steam off to his left. Sidesteps one, sidesteps another. Now he's around the right side. He's got a a lot of green grass out in front of him, just one man to beat. He's going to put the juke move on, and he's going to be into the end zone. Touchdown, Albertini. Louie did a good job of hustling down there at the angle, but Albertini stayed on that sideline, kept his feet, and backed into the end zone. Albertini comes up just a little bit gimpy. Let's see what this is. is Adam limping a little bit on that right-hand side. 59-yard touch or punt return. As he makes his way back towards Coach Watrick. I hope Adam isn't hurt too bad as he's kind of drugged down awkwardly from the side as he tries to gather himself here. And Mr. Jack Mall comes, gives him a little bit of attention. And Marillo, let's see, we're going to line up. Lana Beecher comes in up under center. It's going to be Chandler Bradshaw and Easton Dent at tailback. Bradshaw at fullback. Landon takes a snap. It's going to be Dent off the left side. Just twists his way, and it's going to be no good on extra yep. point. 6.29 left to go in the first period. 29 to nothing. Indians lead big. We'll be back after this one-minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul football on Hot 105. Welcome back to Leroy, Kansas, home of Southern Coffee County. Indians lead 29 to nothing, 629 left to go in the first period as Albertini was dinged up a little bit on that 
punt return. Mike, we hope he's going to be okay. Coach Jackanaw down here on the sideline attending to him. As Murillo has the ball teed up, we'll try to keep you posted on that as the game goes along here. That's one of the concerns that we have. We talked about in the pregame show. That hopefully that's just something that got a little dinged up on. He'll be back. Murillo with a drive and quick into the end zone. This is good kick by Murillo. It's going to give Southern Coffee County. They're going to start back at their own 15-yard line. First and 10 for Southern Coffee County from their own 15-yard line. Indians defense takes the field again. Playing well here on defense tonight. 29 to nothing. 629 left to go in the first period. Southern Coffee playing a little slower game, trying to slow the game down, control the tempo a little bit. Back in the shotgun, though. Back in the pistol is Gluey. Good snap this time. He's going to keep it around the right-hand side. He's got a little running room. Number 43 out there. Johnny on the spot. Drag him down. That is Austin O'Hara. It's going to be a couple-yard gain on the play. O'Hara runs him down. It'll be second down and eight. For the Titans from their own 17-yard line. down and eight for the Titans. Back in the pistol end is Gooey. Set to his right is the running back. It's going to be a high snap. He gets it off. They're going to be a host of Indians. Drag him down. No Wilson game on play. A loss of two on the play. It's hard to catch the ball carrier's number. There's so many Indians around yeah. them. Right when they get it, I believe it was number 14, Herrera, on the carry. It'll bring third down and 10 for Southern Coffee County from their own 15 yard line. In the pistol is Gluey. Set to his left is Herrera. He waits a snap, high snap over his head, bounces back at the five, and he's just going to dive on it at the four yard line. So Southern Coffee County having trouble getting anything going here tonight. It'll be fourth down and a mile as Mason Winter comes in on punt return as Watcher. Kaiser, Watrick, the young freshman, retreats back to his own 30. Tough night on offense for Southern Coffee County. They've definitely got negative yardage. They've been going the wrong direction the whole time, every possession. Fourth and 25 for Southern Coffee County as Herod is in the end zone and awaits the snap. Clock running. They'll run all the time they want. Looking for the back judge, waiting. As the Indians wait too. Now Mason Winter sprints off the field as the Indians had too many players on the field. High snap, he gets it. It's going to be a line drive kick. Bounces about midfield. Watrick picks it up. Takes to his left, goes to his right, and he's going to be ripped down right there on the spot. Good tackle by number 45, Walters. No gain on the return. Watrick. Indians will start first and 10 from their own 36-yard line. First and 10 for the Indians from their own 36. See what the Indians can get going offensively here with the star running back Adam Albertini on the sideline. Still four minutes left in the first period, Dan. 4-12, let's go in the first 29 to nothing. Indians lead. Easton Dent, tailback, Chandler Bradshaw, fullback, Landon Beechner, the young freshman up under center. Here comes the snap, handoff to Easton Dent. Off the right side, got a good block from Bradshaw. He's gonna have a nice gain on first down. Good, 11, 12 yard gain on first down. It'll be a first and 10, give him a gain of 15 yards, Mike, as it's across midfield down to the Southern Coffee County, 29 yard line. First and 10 for the Indians down to the 29. In the pistol is Beechner, set to his right is Easton Dent. Two receivers wide to the left, hand off to Dent, off the left side, a lot of running room out there. And he drops his shoulder pad and leans forward. Gonna have another first down. He's gonna be right at the first down, sticks. Across the 20, down to the 19, 341. Left to go in the first period. Indians lead 29 to nothing. Beechner hustles to the sideline and back in with the play. The young freshman gonna get a lot of playing time with Albertini on the sideline. 
Robert T's up moving around. That's a good sign. Hopefully Coach Watcher just let him rest. Up under center is Beachner now. Dent at fullback. Bradshaw tailback. Bradshaw takes a handoff, tries the right-hand side. He's going to be wrapped up. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10 for the, Brad, for the Indians as Bradshaw with the carry. No gain on the play. Three oh two left to go in the first period. Indians up twenty nine to nothing. As Coach Watrick talking to his line of scrimmage as he gives the play to Beechner run in from the sidelines. Gain of one for Bradshaw, second down and nine. Now the ball down to the sixteen yard line. Count is on from the back back judge. Up under center is Beechner. In the eye it are the Indians. Hand off to Dent off the left side. Nice up the cut. middle he goes. Cuts to the outside. Touchdown, Easton Dent. Easton Dent with a 16-yard touchdown run. Give him a, yeah, 16-yard touchdown run, and the Indians now lead 35 to nothing. The Indians going to kick the extra point. Mason Winter hustles in with the T as Stone King comes to the sideline. 229 left to go in the first. Indians lead 35 to nothing. Up to the line of scrimmage. As Morello sets a T down at the nine. Hayden Smith up over the T. Landon Meachner goes to the slot and Albertini spot on an extra point. No rush from Southern Coffee County. The kick is up and good. St. Paul leads 36 to nothing. 229 left to go in the first quarter. Folks, we'll be back after this one minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul football on Hot 105. Two twenty-nine left to go in the first period. Indians up big, thirty-six to nothing in their final regular season game of the year against Southern Coffee County. As they wrap up the season, try to stay unbeaten on the season, off to a great start, especially defensively, Mike. Yeah, just looking really solid on defense. And special teams, too, with Marillo's leg, you know, the work he's doing as a kick on the kicking team and also with the extra points. So St. Paul got a lot going in their favor right now. Cool night here in Southern Coffee County, but the winds died down, so really good football weather for the boys here in fall season. Marillo high driving kick this time, going to be returnable, taking about the one. Right up the middle goes the returner. It's Herod. I believe he's got some running room now. He's going to be wrapped up as the Indians converge on him, but not until he gets back up to the 25-yard line. First and 10 for Southern Coffee County. And a lot of subs in on that kickoff coverage for the Indians to see Kaiser, Wadrick, Payton, North, Vincent Smith, and Landon Beeson are all in there from the Indians' sideline. First and 10 for Southern Coffee County from their own 25 yard line. Southern Coffee County taking their time in the huddle. 222 <laughs> left to go in the first period. 36 to nothing is the Indian lead. Need them to run a few plays here, Mike. Run some time off the clock. Right. In the pistol is Gluey. Good snap, back to pass, looking to his left. He's going to have a little swing pass. going to fall off the fingertips of Herod and falls incomplete. The young freshman couldn't reel it in. It'll be second down and 10. 2.17 left to go in the first period. 36 to nothing, Indians lead. Really struggling with that quarterback exchange with the center when they're back in the pistol like that. It's still up at the top of his head, not over his head that time, but uh, something that they're going to have to get fixed. Not helping them. Second down and 10 for Southern Coffee County from their own 25-yard line. The Indian defense come up the line of scrimmage. Herod 
is going to come up under center. Single back, or excuse me, Gluey up under center. Herod, now Gluey's going to keep it. Give Carter Johnny on the spot. Wraps him up for a big loss. Good play by Carter. He didn't bite on the fake. And it's going to be a loss of five. It's going to be third down and 15 as Southern Coffee County just can't get anything going offensively. That Indians defense is just stifling them. Third and 15. Carrera is just a freshman there in the backfield. As Gluey, just a sophomore in the pistol. Team. Wide to the right. One single receiver to the right. High snap. Gluey reels it in. Looks to his left. Now to his right. Now he's going to scramble. To his right. Now there's a flag down late right in the middle of football field. But there wasn't nobody around where this flag was thrown, so I'm not sure what this penalty flag is going to be. We'll have to wait and see. Louie ran it to the right. He ran. The announcer's excited about the flag on the play. <laughs> that could be the most excited I've ever heard anyone get about a penalty flag. Yeah, keep you update on what happened with the play. As Louie scrambled to his right, short gain on the play, but we await what the flag is going to be. In St. Paul. It's St. Paul. It's going to be holding in St. Paul. Boy, huh. I don't understand that because there was absolutely nobody around where that flag was thrown at. You know, they might have seen someone get, get held on a route there. One of the D-backs might have got tied up with someone on the pass route. That's the only thing I can figure. And it's still going to be third down and short. Third and one for the Titans. 127 left to go in the first. 36 to nothing. Indians lead. One receiver wide to the left. One to the right. Gluey, high snap. Under pressure, throws it, has a man out there, and it's going to be caught. And Bradshaw grabs an ankle. He's holding on, and then <laughs> the freight train east and dent was coming, and I don't blame number <laughs> 10, Panky. He fell you down. Betcha. You betcha. As, <laughs> as Chase Bradshaw had a hold of his ankle, he was trying to drag away, and hey, Chase was just hanging on for dear life till he got some help coming. And, and the help was east and dent with a head of steam built up, and Panky just fell to the ground. He says, I ain't. Want it. I don't blame the young man. He just went down and said, "That's I'm I'm caught." Yep. First down for Southern Coffee County. First first down of the night for them. Not quite into Indian territory. Still set at their own 37 yard line. Gluey, one receiver wide to the right, one to the left in the pistol. Good snap this time. Right to him. He rolled to his right. Austin O'Hara out there trying to reel him in. He gets around O'Hara. Dent knocks him out of bounds. Looks like it's still going to be a little bit of a loss on the play, a loss of one as he scrambled around the right side. He got around O'Hara, but Easton Dent come, cleans it up. It's going to be second down, 11 from their own 37-yard line. Loss of one on the play as he's run out of bounds, so it stops the clock with 34 seconds left to go here in the first period. Indians lead 36 to nothing. St. Paul awaits to see who they'll play next Thursday night at home. So Indian fans come out next Thursday night at home. Time will be announced. I assume it's a 7 o'clock game. As motion this time, a pitch. Oh, high pitch. Good catch by the young man. And he's going to be wrapped up by Gibb Carter. And that was Voorhees, the sophomore, on the run. They put him in motion from right to left. He catches the pitch and goes around. That's good pursuit by Gibb Carter. He's playing that right defensive end, and he just strung him out to the side. He was right there to make the tackle. Third down and 15, loss of four on the play. And that is going to be the end of the first period. First period score, Indians 36, Titans 0. We'll be back after this one-minute timeout. You're with St. Paul football on Hot 105. One minute time out. And also tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock at the Leroy Senior Center, Jericho Lodge, covering the Southern Coffee County Scholarship Bake Sale. Tomorrow morning, I want you to go get all those baked goods. Get yourselves ready and head westbound on Highway 54 over to Rosalia to Flint Hills to cheer on our <coughs> Lady Titans this first round of Sub City Basket. And of course, next 
Well, welcome back. Start of the second quarter here. Well, I'm not sure if we ever left, but we're back, Mike. <laughs> it's going to be third down and 15 for the Titans. And we can turn down our main a little bit. I apologize back at home. The announcer is just louder than the Dickens. The speaker's sitting right next to me and here. It's right it's next to us, and we just got to be where they tell us to go, and we can't avoid it much. Here's a snap. Back to pass is Gluey. Across the middle is going to be dropped. They're going to call that a catch, I think. It's going to be third down nope, and 15 <laughs> as we apologize for the technical difficulties. We're trying to get it straightened out back at the radio station. Fourth down and 15 for the Titans. This Titans with one first down on the night. It was a set, uh, uh, helped a little bit by a holding penalty against the apparently a defensive back on the Indians. Got the Titans close to a first down, then he was able to run for a first down. Punt formation, Herrera, good drive and kick. Going to bounce, taken by Watrick. Watrick starts his left, now back up the middle. He's got some running room. Good return by Watrick. Oh. Cuts back towards the middle field. He should have stayed out to the yeah. left. That's easier to see up here, <laughs> but he returns it all the way into St. Paul territory. So good return by Kaiser Watrick. Showing his speed and athletic ability. Took out about the 10, Mike, and ran it back to the 40. 31 yard return for the young man. First and 10 for the Indians at the 39. Nice return by Kaiser. He could see where he wanted to go, and then he, I think he changed his mind about the time he crossed over the 40 yard line. That gave him enough time for Southern Coffee to just catch him enough to grab hold and get him down. St. Paul can first and 10 here. for the Indians. I formation dent at tailback. Dent's got a lot of running room off the left side. 10, 20 yard gain down to 20, 15, 10. Drunk down by the shoulder pad at the eight yard line. 30 yard run by Easton Dent around the left hand side. First and goal from the Indians at the Southern Coffee County eight yard line. They mark him out down at the nine yard line. I turned my head away from that announcer. I'm not sure if the back feed at home is from the announcer or something else going on at the station. But first thing goal for the Indians at the nine yard line. Lana Beachner comes in sideline with the play. Indians lead 36 to nothing, 11 12 left to go before halftime. Lana Beachner in the pistol, set to his right in the pistols. Dent, hand off to Dent, left side, Dent. Tries to get to the pile on the left side. Touchdown, Indians. <laughs> Easton Dent with a big night tonight. And gets into the end zone for the Indian touchdown. Now the Indians lead 42 to nothing. 10-51 left to go before halftime. Pending the extra point. Nine-yard touchdown run by Dent. That gives him two rushing on the ground. Also Albertini with two rushing touchdowns plus the return. So Indians still ticking on offense with Dent. Dent's got to be approaching 100 yards on the night already, Mike, yeah, I, I would got think. Him, got him at 80. So 80 yards on the night. Now, Kaiser Watrick comes in for the extra point at tailback. Chandler Bradshaw fullback. Beachner up under center. Watrick with the football off the right side. He's met by a couple of Southern Coffee County Titans. Extra point is no good. So the score remains 42 to nothing. 10-51. Let's go in the second period. We'll be back after this one-minute timeout. You're St. Paul football and hot 105. While we're looking on our way, it will be taking place. Thursday, November 14th, at the Southern Coffee County Middle School, the Veterans Day Celebration Community Dinner will be taking place at 10 a.m. And also, Veterans Day here in Leroy at the Southern Coffee County High School Veterans Day program. So, plenty of opportunities to go and celebrate our great veterans. We really like to thank our veterans each and every day. We do appreciate them. All right, back to the team for the Titans. Number 14, Ethan Herrera, and number two, Wade Lewis. Kicking off 
Welcome back to Southern Coffee County, Leroy, Kansas, where Peyton Norris has the ball teed up for the Indians. The Indians lead 42 to nothing, 10 51 left to go here in the second period. Norris kick drives down to the 15. It's going to be taken there by Gluey. Up to the 20. And Hayden Smith in on right there on the spot at the 20. Knocks him down. Austin O'Hara in there. Peyton Norris in there, the kicker. And it'll be first and 10 for Southern Coffee County from their own 19-yard line. Dan, I was just informed by Mr. Bagshaw, came up here and said that at the end of the game, uh, cheerleaders will be presenting the district trophy to the Indians. So we'll try to keep the live stream up for that. And that's not taking anything for granted here under – that's, the Indians had that wrapped yeah, up coming into tonight. Herrera throws off the left, has his man out there. Beachner, he breaks Beachner's tackle down the sideline. He goes, just one man to beat. Touchdown, Southern Coffee County. No flags on the play as Beachner unable to wrap him up. And he gets by the other secondary players. I've seen him get by Wartrick. And it's going to be a touchdown, Southern Coffee County. Number 10, a Pinky on the reception. And that takes the score out to 48 to 6 with 10.33 left to go here in the second period. That's how fast that can happen. And that's why you can't ever uh, second guess or, or, or underestimate anybody. I see Vincent Smith in there at cornerback. Peyton Norris at a safety. Kaiser Wartrick at a cornerback. Landon Beecher at a safety. And it looks to be Austin O'Hara at the middle linebacker. Mason Winter at the nose guard position. And it looks to be like Stone King and Marillo at the DNs. Here comes the snap on the extra point. Dive wrapped up by a host of Indians, and extra point is no good. Keeps the score at 48 to 6. 10.33 left to go in the second period. We'll be back after this one minute timeout. Let's St. Paul football on Hot 105. There we go. Might as well. On the live stream. Oh, we just lost connection with the radio station. Not going very good back at the radio station, I don't think, Mike. No, nope, having a little trouble back there. Try to fight through it. Wattrick takes it at the 15, starts off to the right, dodges the first man, good return up to the 26-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Indians from their own 26. Sorry about that, we lost you. Get hooked back up here on the radio station. Thank everybody for joining us on the live stream. First and 10 for the Indians from their own 25-yard line on the, uh, sorry about that, we lost them again. Not much cell service up here, apparently. What the heck's going on? Bear with us. Here we go. <laughs> First and 10. For live the, radio, Dan. First and 10 for the Indians from their own 25. Beachner up under center. Fullback Dent. Tailback Chandler Bradshaw. Hands it off to Bradshaw. Bradshaw with the running room. Gets to the outside. 10, 15, 20 yard gain into Indian territory, knocked out at the Indian 33 yard line. Or Southern Coffee County 32 yard line. They start at 25, right, Dan? Yes. Yeah. First and 10 for the Indians from their own 32. From Southern Coffee 32. Southern Coffee's 32, sorry about that. As everybody on the live stream, 
We'll keep calling the game until we get hooked back up on the radio here. First and 10 for the Indians from the Southern Coffee County 32. St. Paul dropped the ball, fumble on the play. Scramble for it, didn't see who came up with it there, but it uh, looks like Southern Coffee is going to recover the fumble. So the first turnover, actually second turnover, the opening kickoff was a turnover by the Indians. That would be the second turnover of the game by St. Paul. And they give it up here deep in Southern Coffee territory with the fumble on the run play there. Good defense by Southern Coffee getting that ball back. So turnover by the Indians. They need to make sure that they're taking care of the football down here. Getting a little bit slick. I know with that grass, it's got to be cold and wet. So we'll see how that goes. It's Indians back on defense now. Southern Coffee County lines up in the pistol. Louie takes it around the left side. He's hit there by Beechner. Brought down, though, after a nice 11-yard gain by Gluey. Welcome back. As first and 10 for Southern Coffee County as Gluey with a nice run up to the 31-yard line. Set the defense here for you for the Indians. Basin winner at nose guard. Ethan Stone King, right defensive end. Ivan Murillo, left defensive end. Cornerbacks are Kaiser Wadrick and Vincent Smith. Linebacker is Austin O'Hara. Free safeties are Landon Beechner and Peyton Norris. <coughs> First and 10 for Southern Coffee County from their own 36-yard line. In the pistol is Gluey. Set to his right is Herrera. Good snap. Hand off to Herrera. In pressure by Winter in the backfield. Gets away from him. Austin O'Hara chasing him down the sideline. He goes. He's wrapped up, but not until a good 20, let's call him an 18-yard gain. Herrera off that left side with a lot of running room into Indian territory. Down to the Indian 26-yard line. Timeout, Indian. So with that timeout, we're going to take a one-minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Welcome back to Southern Coffee County as I keep turning everything down trying to get the <laughs> announcer from calling the game. Maybe I just ought to hold the mic over yeah, there. That's what I was going to say. Maybe game. we can stand behind the building and look over the top of it or something <laughs> try to keep it down. But I know it's loud for you. It's loud for us sitting here, too. I might sound like I'm laying in the well, but <laughs> that's the way I'm going to try it here for a little bit. First in 10 for Southern Coffee County in the Indian Territory. Indian timeout. Coach Walter trying to get his defense set. First and 10 at the Indian 26. High snap. Ball's on the ground. Now picks it up is Gluey. He's pursued by a couple Indians. And there's going to be a flag on the play. There's going to be a block on the back on Marillo. First and 10. Or excuse me. We'll wait the penalty as a good pursuit by the Indians. It was, it was first and 10. It would be a big loss on the play. Indians pursue Gluey, knocking him for a five-yard loss, but now they're going to talk about the penalty flag to the Indians' captains. Not sure how they're going to call it. If it's a block in the back, it's a spot foul. It shouldn't be if you're on defense. I don't know how you can get a block in the back. No, block on the back on Southern Coffee County, okay, Mike. I'm okay. sorry. All right. You, I thought you said it was on Marilla. That's why I thought. No, no. Well, <laughs> the block in the back was Oh, he's on, the victim he of it. I get you. the victim of the block in the back. <laughs> I'm with you now. I'm a little slow. And they are going to take the penalty because the penalty flag was thrown all the way back at, it was thrown at the Indian 36, so it's going to back. Where are they going to step the flag off? I guess it's from the line of scrimmage, so that's where they're going to spot it at the Indian 36-yard line. First and 10 for Southern Coffee, first, excuse me, first and 20 for Southern Coffee County. As uh, all the radio difficulties got me all flustered <laughs> here, Mike. First and 10. They're having the time. For Southern Coffee County from the Indian 36 yard line. Indian's defense needs to bow up. Got all the underclassmen in there. A little look at next year here. Gluey with the snap. He's going to keep it to his left. Run the option. He pitches it late to Herrera. 
Austin O'Hare drags him down. Good pursuit by O'Hare. It's going to be like a three-yard gain on the play. It'll be second down and 17 for Southern Coffee County as they get down to the Indian 34-yard line. See Austin pursuing him out there. He let him get around the corner on him, so I'm sure Coach Watcher's going to coach him up on that to try and string that out to the side, try to make contact before he makes that turn. But good pursuit by O'Hare. He's fast enough. He's able to catch him from behind. Second down and 17 for Southern Coffee County. One receiver to the right, one to the left. Gluey is the single back set in the pistol. Back to pass, cross middle of the screen pass. Two Titans fall into, or ran into each other and it falls harmlessly incomplete. That was pass intended for Panky, I believe, the senior. It'll be third down and 17 for Southern Coffee County. Third and 17, time for the Indians. Defense. They're going to have to stiffen up, though, because uh, had some struggles here when they, with the turnover. Now they need to get the ball back. Third down and 17. It's one receiver to the right, one to the left. Third and 17. Here comes the snap. Gluey with a good snap right to him this time. Rolled to his right. Pursued by Murmur. He's going to keep it now. Has a little running room. He's going to be belted out of bounds by... Austin O'Hare, but not until the Indians get down to the 20, or not the Indians, Southern Coffee County gets to the Indians 22 yard line. It'll bring up fourth down and call it six for Southern Coffee County. A big fourth down and six for the Indians defense coming right up. I think the scoreboard's off, Dan. It's showing score now instead of. 48. Not sure where the mess up was. I had to redo the math myself. But Fourth down and six for Southern Coffee County. Gluey's going to keep it off the left side. Now cuts up the middle of the field. He's going to have a first down and more, and it's going to be a touchdown. Southern Coffee County, good cut by Gluey on the fourth down and six. And the Indians defense give up another six points with 8-13 left to go here in the second period, 42-12. to 12. Indians lead by 30. 26-yard run there by Gluey. As they, we await the extra point by Southern Coffee County. Eight thirteen left to go in the second period. Forty-two to twelve. Indians up by thirty. I formation. Emmons goes into the tailback position. It's going to be handoff to Emmons off the left side, leaning for the goal line, and it is going to be good. Extra point is good. Score is 42 to 14. 813 left to go here in the second period. We'll be back after this one minute timeout. You're with St. Paul football on Hot 105. Welcome back to Southern Coffee County as St. Paul leads 42 to 14, 8 13 left to go here in the second period. As Watrick stands back at his own five, awaiting the kick. Kick is a kick down the middle, going to be taken by Watrick. Now it gets past him, rolls towards the goal line. He picks it up to two. Now he's going to have hot pursuit. Breaks one tackle, two tackle. He's got some running room down the left sideline. But the Southern Coffee County drags him down by the shirt tail. That is Walters drags him down, but a good return by Kaiser Watrick. And it'll be first and 10 for the Indians from their own 33-yard line.
First and 10 for the Indians from their own 33-yard line. Indians lead 42-14, 8.03 left to go here in the second period. Beechner comes in with the play from the sideline. First and 10, Beechner up under center. Kaiser Watrick now comes in at tailback. East and in at fullback. Watrick with the carry off the right side. Right up to get it goes. Has some nice running room. Ripped down by the helmet. That could have been a face mask. No call made. It'll be second down and five for the second down and four. Uh, they are up to the 39 yard line. Second down and four. Second down and four for the Indians. I formation. Beechner up under center. Watrick at tailback. Dent at fullback. Fullback dive off the right side. Dent with a lot of running room. One man to beat. About loses the football. Falls forward all the way down across the 20. Down to the 19-yard line. First down and 10 from the 19. I turned you down on purpose, Mike. First down and 10 for the Indians at their own 20-yard line. Easton Dent at fullback, Watrick at tailback, Beechner up under center. Here comes the snap. Boy, early jump by the Indians, no call. Pressure in the backfield. Watrick's going to be brought down for a two-yard loss. It'll be second down and 12 for the Indians back at the 21-yard line. Caught second and 11. Ball spotted right at the 20. 6.45, left to go in the second period. Indians up 42 to 14. Stone King up over the football. Split back formation this time. Dent to the left, Watrick to the right. Lana Beechner up under center. Here comes the snap. Beechner's gonna keep it off the right side. Good block by Dent and Watrick. And Beechner into the end zone. Touchdown, Indians. Landon Beaster with a 20-yard touchdown run. Good for the Indians touchdown. That takes the score back up to 48 to 14. Is that right, Mike? Four. 48 to 14. Got Mike got Mike's mic turned down, so he's trying to answer, but he can't hear him. As Dent comes in from the sideline with the play. Stone King back up over the football. Indians going to go for two. Beechner up under center. I formation. Dent at fullback. Watrick at tailback. Here comes the snap. Watrick with the football. Right up the gut he goes. Leans for the end zone. No good. Extra point is no good. That takes the score at 48 to 14 with 619 left to go in the second period. We'll be back after this one minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul football on Hot 105. Welcome back to Southern Coffee County where the Indians lead 48 to 14 with 618 left to go here in the second period. As back deep is Gluey and Herrera for Southern Coffee County. Murillo has the ball teed up. If you're just joining us, Adam Albertini was nicked up a little on a kickoff return when he's drug out of bounds at the goal line and he hasn't returned back to the football game and I doubt we see him. We hope the young man will be all right. I think maybe he took a helmet to his knee. 48 to 14, Indians lead, 619 left to go here in the second period. First and 10 
as Murillo boots it into the end zone. First and 10 for Southern Coffee County at their own 15 yard line. Thank you everybody for joining us on the live stream. Stick around for our KW Trucking post game show at the conclusion of this game, whatever it is. Lily keeps the snap, starts off to the right, cuts up to the middle. He's going to be drugged down by Mason. Winter is in on that tackle. He's going to have a two or three yard gain on the play. Second down and seven. I don't know. Second down and seven for the Titans back at their own 18 yard line. Come Titans up to the line. We'll see what they got here on second. Got one split out to the right. The receiver. It's I believe it's bright, number 24. He's back to pass is Gluey. It's a little slip screen out here to Herrera on the right side. Missed one tackle. He's brought down there by Kaiser Watrick, but not before he gains the Southern Coffee County first down out to the Southern Coffee County 27 yard line. That's a Titan first down, first and 10 for the Titans from their own 29 yard line. Set the defense, ending defense for you. Mason Winter at nose guard. Austin Hara at defensive end, moves the defensive end. Murillo at the left defensive end. Kaiser Wartrick and Chase Bradshaw at linebackers. Peyton Norris and Vincent Smith at cornerbacks. And Landon Beecher is your free safety. High snap. Gluey reels it in, looks across the middle of the field, pressure in the backfield, throws it up for grabs. It's going to be oh caught. My. Great <laughs> caught by number 10. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds, but there's a flag on the play. At the 33-yard line. And right. We'll see what this is. Hopefully it's not. We'll see if that's defensive holdings. I'm going to see what this is. We'll wait. Southern Coffee County stays back as they await. If it, the play stands, Southern Coffee County will have first and 10 from the Indian 15. Blocking the Mac against Southern Coffee County, so that's going to negate a great well, that's play. That's hurt him. That was a heck of a catch by Panky. Panky, boy, he was up over the top and over his shoulder, looking backwards, and I don't know how he came down with it, but he did. So there's a lot of credit to that kid on that catch. So that negates a great play by Southern Coffee County, and it's going to back Southern Coffee County way up. And they had first and 10 from their own 28. Panky caught it, ran it down the sideline, all the way to the Indian 15. And they're going to back up a 10-yard penalty from there. So it's going to be first and 20 from their own 18-yard line. So they goes to their own 18. They went from the Indian 15 all the way back to their own 19-yard line. First and 10 for the Titans, backed up at their own 20-yard line. Looks like you got Dent and Gibb Carter over here on the sideline. Actually, take that back. Carter's back in now, I think. No, he's not. He's over here. And the pistol is Gluey. High snap. He reels it in, looks across the middle. Now he's pursued by Winter. Throws it late. Caught. Out of bounds. Herrera. Watrick on the coverage. It's going to be a good 13 yard gain on the play. The Titans get up to their own 33 yard line. It'll be second down and six. Southern Coffee County having some success here with that passing game. They're able to pick it around. When they get some time to throw it, they're able to hit the receivers. Receivers pretty sure-handed for Southern Coffee. They're able to make some nice catches there, and so they're slowly whittling their way down the football field. So Paul going to have to tighten up there in the defensive backfield for sure. Second down and six for Southern Coffee County, backed up at their own 33-yard line. Galui in the backfield, one receiver to the right and left, back to pass again. Looks to his left, across the middle, has his man caught, and that's Panky on the reception. He's going to be hit by a couple of Indians. Good hit as Hayden Smith comes up, but it's not until it's after a 10-yard gain and good for a first down for Southern Coffee County as they are now into Indian territory down to the 37-yard line. First and 10 for the Titans, 427 left to go in the second period, 48-14 Indians lead. 
Southern Coffee Fa County has found it a little success in the passing game here, Mike. Yeah, St. Paul going to have to tighten things up for sure in the backfield. First and 10 for Southern Coffee County at the Indian 37. One receiver splits wide to the right. Herrera stays in the backfield, setting up next to Gluey. Gluey takes the snap. He's going to keep it around the left-hand side. Bradshaw comes up, wraps him up. Not until he gains about four on the play. It'll be second down and six for Southern Coffee County. Down to the Indian 34-yard line. Southern Coffee coach mixing things up now. Got St. Paul watching and nervous about the pass. Then he comes off that little run around the end, had him playing soft outside, trying to help out with some of the pass defense. So good play calling by Southern Coffee here on this drive. If you can't understand us on the radio, just step outside your porch in St. Paul and you'll be able to hear this announcer. <laughs> That's a fact. Second down and six for Southern Coffee County at the Indian 34 yard line. Up under center, hand off to Herrera. He's got a little pressure in the backfield by Mason Winter. He lets him go. Now he pushes a pile forward for another couple positive yards. It's going to be third down and five. Call it third down and four as he's down to the Indian 31 yard line. Big third down and four. Two play territory. So India's defense really going to have to stiffen up as Southern Coffee County in the Indian territory at the 34. Third down and four. In the pistol is Gluey. Set to his right. Her high Ball snap the over the head. Not much pressure by the Indians. Now here comes Austin O'Hare and Mason Winter trying to chase him down. And Murillo and Winter brings him down for a bigger. O'Hare brings it down for a big loss on the play. That's going to be a loss of 79, 10 yards on the play back to midfield. It'll bring up fourth down and 13 for. So the Indians defense needed a big play and they got it. Big loss on the play, fourth down and 13 back at midfield. 2.06 left to go here in the second period. 48 to 14, Indians lead. Gluey in the pistol, set to his right is Herrera. Back to pass, Gluey launches it. Got a man out there, Panky gets behind everybody and Beechner drags him down from behind, but not until. It's a big play on the play by Panky. And he's all the way down to the Indian 14-yard line. First and 10 for Southern Coffee County. I think he's clear down to 10, it looks like. Oh, it is. First down and goal from the 9 as he got behind the coverage of the Indians. Broken coverage as Panky got behind everybody, and he reels it in. Panky, a senior, catches that pass. from the young sophomore. First and goal, Southern Coffee County from their own nine, or from the Indians nine. One receiver wide to the right. Louie in the pistol, set behind him is Herrera. Gives it to Herrera, right up the middle. He's gonna be wrapped up, not until he gets down to the five yard line. It'll be second and goal from the five. 105 left to go before halftime. Indians lead 48 to 14. That was the 10th play of this drive, Dan. Southern Coffee really controlling the ball is on this drive, controlling the clock and the ball. Second down and goal from the five. For Southern Coffee County. 48 to 14 in his lead, 40 seconds and counting. Second down and goal for Southern Coffee County. Still have all of their timeouts. Gluey up to line of scrimmage in the pistol. He rolls to his right, looking to his right. Keep rolling, keep rolling. Murillo and Chase, he throws it away. He's going to stop the clock with 25 seconds left to go. It'll be third down and goal from the five-yard line. For Southern Coffee County, 48-14. Indians lead by 34. 25 seconds left to go for halftime. Southern Coffee County gets to save their timeout <clears throat> with the incomplete pass. See if they stay in the pistol, Mike. Their nemesis has been the snaps. Every time they get something rolling here, in the pistol again. But Herrera is set behind Galui in that pistol. 
Here comes the snap. High snap. He reels it in. He's going to keep it off the left-hand side, and he's going to lean, stretch back down, back, tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, so it'll bring up a fourth and goal from the five-yard line, 17 seconds. They take a timeout. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. You listen to St. Paul football on Hot 105. We'll go ahead and stay here. 17.3 seconds left to go before halftime. 48 to 14 is the Indian lead when we come back from this timeout. It's taken by Southern Coffee County, trying to get in the end zone for the third time this half. Find a little success here in the second period. St. Paul was on a roll in that first period. Coach Watrick playing a lot of younger players here. Well, and you can't blame him for that. You know, you gotta think about what's coming down the pike too. 17.3 seconds left to go here on the live stream. 48 to 14. <clears throat> here comes fourth down play. Herrera. Gluey in the pistol. Is it a catch? It's going to fall incomplete. That pass was intended for Lind, Brayton Lind, and it falls harmlessly incomplete as the cornerback was staring back into the backfield, let Lindy get out there open, and it went off his fingertips, fell incomplete. So it's going to be first and 10 from the Indians as they take over on the change of possession on downs. The Indians caught a little break there because he was open, and then Pass just a little bit out of his reach. He stretched out, tried to drag it in. I just don't think he had control of it. First and 10 from their own six-yard line. Beechner comes in at the line of scrimmage. 10.7 seconds left to go here before halftime. See what the Indians do before half. I formation, Den at fullback, Watrick at tailback. 48 to 14 is the Indians lead. Here comes the snap. Beechner keeps it, pitches it out to Watrick. Watrick cuts back, gets across a five up to the seven. And that's going to bring us to halftime. Mike, 48-14 is the score. We'll be back after this two-minute timeout. You're with St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Two minutes, Caleb. All right, everybody on the live stream, you're going to hear Mike Mike and I have a little conversation here. So, <laughs> Mike, if we're coming through fine on the live stream, it should be coming through fine on radio, shouldn't it? Uh, got me. <laughs> I don't know. Have, have a little trouble on the radio end back at home. Thank everybody for joining us on live stream. 11.05 here, just underway in halftime. 48-14, Indians lead.
Welcome back to Southern Coffee County. The Indians lead here at halftime, 48 to 14. The Indians got off to a good roll here in the first quarter, Mike. Kind of let Southern Coffee County get a little momentum in that second period, Mike. Yeah, they sure did. They really, you know, had their foot on the gas to start out the game, start out strong. The opening kickoff uh, caught them a little bit by surprise. It bounced off one of the front linemen. Southern Coffee kicking to St. Paul, uh, one of the St. Paul front four. Uh, took one off the leg and it bounced off Southern Coffee able to recover it, but it uh, wasn't long before St. Paul got the ball back from him on an interception. Uh, it was able to get the ball back. They scored. Actually, they scored on the first three offensive plays and uh, they were up early, but like you mentioned, as the second quarter came around, uh, Adam Albertini suffered that uh, little injury to his knee. Uh, I think Coach Watrick probably just out of caution kept him on the sideline, gave him time to rest. Uh, but they really, St. Paul really missed him, especially on defense where uh, they were having some trouble in the defensive backfield covering the receivers. And that's usually Albertini, especially on defense, playing that safety position. And uh, Southern Coffee County really capitalized on that, able to move the ball down the field, get some points on the board, scoring 14 points here in the first half. 8.37 left to go in the first period. Indians lead 48-14. We'll have Mike back with his first half stats after this next two-minute timeout. You're the St. Paul football on Hot 105. Welcome back to Southern Coffee County, Leroy, Kansas. 742 left to go in at halftime here. 48-14 Indians lead. Mike, what do you got for first half yeah, stats? Un unofficial first half stats here, Dan, as near as I could keep up with them. It's kind of hard uh, with these the tall grass. I'm not used to watching that, so I had to look twice a couple of different times on the yardage, but uh, I think it's pretty close here. But regardless of that, Adam Albertini only had three rushes in the first half before going out. Like we said, uh, as a precautionary measure to keep him on the sideline, he had three rushes. Two of those were for touchdowns, one for 13 yards, one for five yards. So 46 yards on three carries in the first half for Albertini, along with two rushing touchdowns. But in addition to that, uh, Adam also scored one interception. He had a pick six there deep into uh, Southern Coffee territory and ran that back for a touchdown. Also a kickoff return and a pump return. So five touchdowns by Albertini and he was injured for most, or out of the game at least, for most of the first half. So a big night for Adam. If he's on the field, he's going to have a big night. You can almost count on that. Easton Dent carried the load for St. Paul on the ground. He had six rushes for 100 yards even, but he also had two rushing touchdowns, one for 16 yards and one for nine. Chandler Bradshaw with one carry for uh, one yard. Kaiser Watrick. Six carries for seven yards, and Landon Beechner had one carry for 20 yards and a touchdown run for Landon Beechner in the second period. Scoring-wise for St. Paul, Adam Albertini, as I mentioned, with 9.56 left in the first quarter, a 13-yard touchdown run. The extra point was good. St. Paul went for two on that extra point attempt. Then they started kicking some extra points with Marilla later on. Uh, score was 8 to nothing with 9.39. They struck again, though, 20 seconds later, basically 15 seconds, uh, on another Albertini five-yard run after the uh, turnover by uh, Southern Coffee County. Just a minute, I forgot who I was talking about. Brought the score to 14 to nothing. Albertini returned to kickoff. Oh, St. Paul defense, though, also had the safety. Forgot about that with 8.52 left in the first period. Got a... Uh, Southern Coffee County having trouble with that quarterback exchange and those high snaps, and that cost them two points when the defense scored a safety. So we come into halftime here. Uh, St. Paul really, you know, doing a good job overall on offense, especially picking up some of the slack with Albertini off the field. So uh, Landon Beechner getting a chance to play, Kaiser Watrick getting a chance to move the ball, and Easton Dent carrying a big part of the load on the ground, as I mentioned, for St. Paul. But they didn't get out of here unscathed. They allowed 14 points 
uh, for Southern Coffee County. So here we are with halfway through the halftime session, five minutes left to go. We're going to get into the third quarter, but St. Paul's got a nice lead, 48 to 14. You know Coach Watrick down in the corner talking to the boys, getting them lined up, telling them they're going to have to tighten up on this pass defense in the second half. Yeah, we'll be back with that second half after this next two-minute timeout. You're listening St. Paul football on Hot 105. Welcome back to Leroy, Kansas, where St. Paul leads here at halftime, 48 to 14. Now we apologize for the announcer noise, but we're just gonna have to deal with it here. 149 left to go in halftime. As I said, St. Paul leads 48 to 14. Adam Albertini was his uh, little injury update. Had, took a knee to the helmet as he scored in the end zone on one of his kickoff returns. He set the rest of the first half just kind of per cap precautionary I believe as uh, you know how hard a helmet is and your knees pretty soft so uh, hopefully Adam will be okay he's up and walking around with a hoodie on but he's done for the night so St. Paul getting a lot of JV time here in that second period interested to see them young kids see how they grow and play here in the second half Mike yeah and you know we got so used to St. Paul coming in here and getting out of these games early it's going to do them some good get these kids on the field and get them playing time and uh, uh, you know they got like I said you get used to that going home early and then sometimes when you have to uh, overcome a little bit of adversity that's really something that's going to help you down the road so you know and all in all St. Paul got a comfortable lead there's no doubt about that and so it's a good opportunity for these young kids to get out there and, and really figure out what they're doing especially in that uh, pass coverage you know I think that's where we're going to see them really working hard because I'm sure Southern Coffee County is going to come out and keep doing what was working for them which was throwing the ball so they'll get an opportunity here to figure it out, and that'll be really good, I think, in the long run for St. Paul's defense. I want everybody to join the Indians at home at Miles Field in St. Paul next Thursday night, 7 p.m. kickoff. The week nine, St. Paul will welcome Hartford or Wakefield to town next Thursday night. So make sure you join us on a Thursday night for Thursday night football, just like the NFL, only at Miles Field in St. Paul. 
Both teams about out, back out on the field, warming up, getting set for the second half where the Indians lead 48 to 14 here in this first half of football as we get set for the third quarter as everybody finishes their warm-ups here. As we're going to take one more break because there's three minutes on the clock as they finalize warm-ups. We're going to take one last two-minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Welcome back to Leroy, Kansas. Two minutes left to go before the second half kick. It is a lead of 48-14. Mike, what do you look for in the second half here? Well, like I said, I think uh, you're going to see Leroy or Southern Coffee County continue what they were doing there, especially in the second quarter where they started airing the ball out, and they definitely have some uh, capable receivers. I think the biggest problem that they've had offensively has been that high snap, which really – happened about every time they were back in the pistol or the shotgun either one the snap was either over the head of the quarterback or he had to jump up to get it but uh, when he did get a hold of it and he had a little bit of time his receivers were getting open and they've got some good hands they made a couple of nice catches had a couple of tough breaks they got called back on the penalty on the one really big class play that they had just before halftime but they're definitely able to move the ball through the air so uh, sh moving things around shaking it up a little bit too because uh I mentioned there on that long drive where they were getting a pass, some success with the passing game, and then they changed it up when St. Paul softened up and tried to get some help in the defensive backfield and threw a couple option plays at them, able to move the ball down the field. So I think we'll see more of the same from Southern Coffee County. And on the St. Paul side, I look for the defense to really try to turn up the pressure if they're going to throw the ball to turn up the pressure up front, try to get some heat on the quarterback and take advantage of those high snaps and, and get some uh, the front line guys back in the – offensive backfield put some pressure on the quarterback had, uh, forcing him to make some mistakes and I think that's going to be the key try to cause some turnovers and get the ball back and then give the offense a chance to work here 48 to 14 Indians lead here at halftime as we get set for the second half kick we'll see if the <laughs> Indians kick off or, re or receive I know Southern Coffee County kicked off to start the ball game as the Indians finish up their warm-ups, we'll see if the wet grass, Mike, here in the second half, this long, lush grass is going to get awful damp, see if there's uh, any turnover action here in the second or in the third period to start this third period here. If Indians are going to have to take care of the football. It looks like the Indians are going to kick off to start this second half. Yes. Temperature-wise, I don't think it's probably any lower than about, what, 45 degrees or so, but it sure feels chilly out here, and you know with that tall, thick grass, got some moisture in it. And so the ball's going to be slick. You can see a little bit of a shine out there with the lights shining down on it. And, and you know, that could be a, a little bit of a hindrance to hanging on to the ball as they get started here, but we'll see. As we get set, the Indians are going to kick off to Leroy Southern Coffee County. So the Indians defense need to bow up here and get a big stop here to start the third quarter here. Thank everybody for joining us on the live stream. Thank our title sponsor, Farmers Bank, and all our sponsors. Stick around for our KW Trucking post game show at the conclusion of this ball game. Also stick around on the live stream. Like we mentioned, they're going to give away the district championship trophy. That'll be the Indians receiving that for the cheerleaders. We'll have that coverage too. We'll keep live stream up and uh, try to get that out for you at the end of the game. 12 minutes. 12 minutes on the clock. Morello kicks off. Taken by Herrera at the 5, 10, 15, wrapped up right there by Hayden Smith. Flag, oh no, excuse me, wrapped up right there. First and 10 for Southern Coffee County from their own 15 yard line. Good kick coverage by Hayden Smith for the Indians. Yeah, Hayden really did a good job keeping his lanes. That's what I noticed that time on the kickoff. The kickoff team all maintained their lanes, didn't let anybody break towards the outside, and they were able to get good coverage that time. Some of the starters back into the game. Ethan Stone King at nose guard. Murillo at defensive end. Gib Carter at defensive end. Austin O'Hara at the cornerback or linebacker position as well as Easton Dent. Chase Bradshaw, Landon Beastner, and Hayden Smith 
back at the free safety spots. Up under center is Galui. Handoff off the left side, wrapped up by a host of Indians. Nowhere to go for number 30, Ammons, the junior. And it's going to be a loss of one, second down 11 for Southern Coffee County from their own 15-yard line. Emmons a load, too. He's the one that carries the ball on their extra points, and he's a pretty big kid running in through there. Tried to get him loose up through the middle, but that defensive line up there in the front really tightened things down, stopped the play. Second down and 11 for Southern Coffee County from their own 15-yard line. Up on, oh, no, back in the pistol is Gluey. Set to his right is Herrera. Here comes the snap. High snap, he takes it, going to pitch it to her. Ball's loose on the ground. He's just going to jump on it right there. Dent touches him down. It's going to be no gain on the play. It's going to bring third down and 11 for Southern Coffee County from their own 15. Peyton Norris checks into the game and takes Beechner's position at the free safety spot. Got a lot of space between the quarterback and the pitch man on that option play. Uh, pitched it a little bit early also. St. Paul had an opportunity there on the turnover and the ball went on the ground. They strung it out almost to the sideline. Third down and 11 from their own 15 is Southern Coffee County. Good defense so far by the Indians. See if that secondary can cover up the receivers here. Gluey in the pistol. He's going to roll to his left. He pitches it to his left. And that's Herrera, but he's wrapped up. Here comes a flag in on the play be a hold, at the 16. Dent wraps up Herrera for a couple yards loss. They stay spotted until they see what the flag is, see what the Indians do here on the flag. And they are going to decline the penalty. It'll bring up fourth down and 14 for Southern Coffee County, backed up at their own 13-yard line. Watrick backs up. To take the punt return. He's backing up at his own 27. <clears throat> Herod has done a great job punting for the Titans tonight as he awaits the snap. It's a low snap. He picks it up off the ground. He scrambles oh. to his right, gets away from Carter, and gets a kickoff. Good job by him. Wattrick touches the ball, loses it, and then Johnny on the spot. Indians get on the football, and that is Chase Bradshaw as Wattrick couldn't reel it in. Luckily, Bradshaw was right there to recover it. Dangerous play when it's coming at you and it hits the ground in front of you rolling is better sometimes just to get away, especially when you're out around midfield. Flag on the field clear back at the 12-yard line. See what this flag is. White Hatter sorting it out with the side judge who threw the flag. As he comes to midfield to make the call, we all wait. He's taking his time. The anticipation's killing me. Now they're going to get together and talk about it. I'm talking See about what the flag is. If it'll be first and ten for the Indians at the Titan 38, as it looks like they're going to walk back towards the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage. Too many men on the field for the Indians. And that's going to allow Southern Coffee County. I think they're going to have to. And they're going to. It's going. I think it's just a five-yard yeah, penalty. Five so it's going to be fourth down can. and ten for Southern Coffee County. Now they're fourth down and ten from their own 16-yard line. A little confusion on the Indians' punt return with all the young kids in and out. They got eight on the field this time. Now the whistles. They're going to check on the spot, I bet. Blow. It's fourth down at 11 for the Titans. Ball is spotted at their own 16-yard line. Now they're going to come talk to the coach. We're just underway here in the third quarter. Ten minutes left to go in the third. 48-14 Indians lead. A stoppage of play as the coach Ask a question to the White Hat. Fourth down and 11 for the Titans back at their own 16-yard line. Watrick awakes the punt at his own 27. Herod, low snap. Herod boots the football. Watrick takes it on the fly at the 35-yard line. Good return by Watrick. Off the left side, chopped down by Herod at the Titan 19-yard line. It's a great return by Kaiser. Took it at his own 35, returns it down to the 19. First and 10 Indians from the Southern Coffee County 19-yard line. 
First and 10 for the Indians from the 19. Beachner trots in from the sideline with the play. The Indians break huddle. It looks like Chandler, it's going to be in the pistol. Chandler Bradshaw is slot right. Easton Dent is set to Beachner's right in the pistol. He takes the snap. Hands to Easton Dent off the left side. A lot of running room for Dent. Good stiff arm by Dent. Into yep. the end zone is Easton Dent. Off the stiff arm with that right arm at about the five-yard line. Give himself some room and get in the end zone. 19-yard touchdown run by Easton Dent. Takes the score up to 52, or excuse me, 54 to 14. 9.37 left to go in the third. Indians go for two on the extra point. Wartrick comes into the game. Chandler. Bradshaw stays in. Up to the line of scrimmage come the Indians. Beachner up under center. Split back formation. Wartrick and Dent is the split back. Here comes the extra point. Beachner takes the snap. Rolls back to pass. Got Bradshaw out there. Extra point is good. Beachner to Chandler Bradshaw. Good for the two-point conversion. 9.37 left to go in the third. Indians lead 56-14. We'll be back after his one-minute timeout. Let's St. Paul football on Hot 105. One minute. Nine thirty-seven left to go in the third period. Fifty-six to fourteen. Indians up big here. Morello tees the ball up at the thirty. Gluey and Herrera back deep for Southern Coffee County, standing away at about their own five-yard line. See if Morello can keep up his big leg here. Put one in the end zone again. Here's the whistle. And here's the kick. Kick is away. Ball bounces about the 10, goes out of bounds at the five-yard line, so a rare out of bounds by Murillo. That'll back the Indians up five yards, and I'm sure Southern Coffee County will make the Indians re-kick. <clears throat> we'll see as they wait. Trying to decide what they're going to do. Seems like we do a lot of standing around here in this half. It's kind of dragging on, Dan. The options are that Southern Coffee County take it at the 25, take it where it goes out of bounds, and they're not going to do they're that. They're going to take the ball. And they are going to take the ball at the 25-yard line. First and 10 for Southern Coffee County. At their, no, they're going to spot at the 30. At the 35. Boy. First and 10 for Southern Coffee County at their own 35-yard line. As they hustle up to the line of scrimmage, it's going to be Gluey in the pistol. Set to his right is Herrera. Here's a snap. Good snap. He's going to run the option to the left. Pitches it late. Belted by Dent. Oh, man. Dent lit him up. That's going to be a three-yard loss on the play. That's going to be a two-yard loss. Second down and 12 for Southern Coffee County. Yeah, that was just back not, at their own 34. Not very good execution of the option there when he came around. He hesitated before he pitched and Dent saw it coming the whole way. He made the pitch, didn't give the back any room to run. Dent just lit him up. 9.08 left to go here in the third period. 56 to 14. Gluey in the pistol set to his right is Herrera. One receiver slot to the left. High snap. Gluey reels it in, throws it deep across the middle, looking for Panky, knocked down by Bradshaw. <laughs> Looked like Chandler had a chance to pick that off, but he wisely just stuck his hand up, yep, knocked the football play. harmlessly to the ground. Third down and 11 for Southern Coffee County from their own 34-yard line. 
good coverage that time as Gouley was looking for Panky, who's been hot in that second quarter. Better defense there by the Indians, knocking that pass down. Now it's third down and 11. Ball spotted at the Southern Coffee County 34. One receiver to the right, one to the left. Gluey in the pistol, high snap, takes it about his own 25, rolls to the right, throws it late across the middle, falls incomplete. And it'll be four down and 11. Good pressure that time by Gibb Carter. That's what we talked about they needed to do, not give him any time to get set, and that's made a difference here. Pass was intended for Lind, no good. Fourth down and 11 for Southern Coffee County. 56 to 14, Indians lead big, 8.44 left to go into third. Herod awaits the snap back at his own 25 for the punt. Back deep at the 10 is Watrick. Good punt, line drive, take it on the fly at the 15. Up to the 20, 25, 30, cuts back to middle field. And he's going to be 35, still going, 40, cross midfield down to the 38. <laughs> Boy, a good return by Kaiser Watrick. He's really waiting for things to develop in front of him. Indians, I could see them too. A couple of them, as they were making a block, they were checking to make sure that they were on the front side of the <laughs> defender. So good job by the Indians to avoid the block in the back call on the return. So excited, got all choked up <laughs> got there, all Mike. Choked up, didn't you? Down to the Southern Coffee County 37 yard line. So great return by Kaiser Watcher. Took that on the fly on the line drive. Broke a couple tackles all the way down to Southern Coffee County 37. High formation, Dent at fullback, Watrick at tailback. Dent turns around and says something to Watrick. I'm going to guess what it is after the play. Beaster takes a snap, hands it to Watrick, and, boy, he's ran into by his own player. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and Lost 12. Yard. Good penetration by Southern Coffee County. And it'll be a loss of two. It'll be second down and 12. Ball spotted Southern Coffee County 39-yard line. Second down and 12. Clock's running. 8.02 left to go in the third period. 56 14 Indians lead. Split back formation this time. Dent to the right. Watrick to the left. Beastner up under center. Here's the snap. Beastner's going to keep it off the left side. Tries to get the outside. He's going to be wrapped up. Ball comes Ball loose, loose. And it's loose. And Southern Coffee County gets on the football. So Southern Coffee County is going to take over first and 10 in Indian Territory at the 34-yard line. First and 10, Southern Coffee County. That's just what the Indians didn't need at that point of the game was a turnover, giving Southern Coffee County some life back here. Walters wraps up Beechner, slung him around, and when he did, he ripped the football loose. And gets Southern Coffee County gets on the football, first and 10 for them. At the Indian 34-yard line. Southern Coffee County comes up to the line of scrimmage. Galui in the pistol to quarterback. Set to his right is Herrera. Here comes the snap. Rolls out to his right. It's going to go deep for Panky. He's got him down there, but overthrows him. Boy, he was and falls open. incomplete. Panky was open again, but... Louis overthrows him. It'll be second down and 10 from the Indian 35 yard line. 7.37 left to go in the third. Indians lead 56 to 14. Last regular season game, last district game. Indians trying to stay undefeated here to finish off their season. Regular season. Louis in from the sideline with the play. Second down and 10. Ball at the Indians, 35 off the turnover from the loss by Beechner. We talked about turnovers in that wet grass, but that was just a strip fumble. Yeah, it just got stripped. Gluey in the pistol, set to his right as Herrera. High Ooh. snap over his head. Ball's on the ground back at the 31. Picks it up and just dives on it as here come Ethan Stone King and Gib Carter. Gluey kind of looked up like he's going to pick it up, and he's seen him coming, so he just got out of the way of the freight train and saved himself and the football, but he loses a ton on the play. It'll be third down and 23 back at their own 32-yard line. In the pistol against Gluey, set to his right is Herrera. Look for number 10, Panky, see where he comes from. 
High snap again. He retreats back to his 20. He's going to throw it deep for Panky. And ooh, oh. Hayden Smith just got a fingertip on that as he tried to jump the route. Panky was behind him. Luckily, Panky couldn't reel it in yeah, off his dangerous. fingertips. Because if he would have, there wouldn't have been nobody left to catch him. Sometimes it's smarter just to play your position and you see that coming and you really want to, like you said, jump the route. And, and Hayden's had some luck doing that, but boy, that takes a risk when there's no one else behind you. Falls harmlessly incomplete, fourth down and 23. Ball back, Southern Coffee County, 32. Herod with the punt. Watrick stands back about his own 18, goes out of bounds at the 24 yard line. They're gonna spot it at the 25. It'll be first and 10 for the Indians from their own 25 yard line. 6.45 left to go in the third quarter. Indians lead 56-14. Indians get an opportunity to redeem themselves here on offense and try to get the ball moving again. Came out of that after the turnover, didn't give up any points, so that's the fortunate part. Up to the line of scrimmage comes the in Indians. Beachner up under center, single back sets Easton Dent. Wide to the right is Kaiser Watrick. First down and 10 for the Indians. Here comes the snap. Hand off to Dent, right side. Bounces to the outside. Looks for a block. Cuts back to the middle. Now Pinky finally reels him in, but not until he has a nice 17 yard gain into Southern Coffee County territory at the 38 yard line. First and 10. Dent and the Indians is that. It's got to put Dent well over 100 yards yeah. on the night, Mike. First and 10 for the Indians at the 38-yard line. Colony Crest sets second in this district, Mike, so they will possibly host a home game themselves next Thursday night. I formation, Dent at fullback, Watrick at tailback, Beachner up under center, up to the line of scrimmage, Southern Coffee County. Kaiser gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10 for the Indians at the 37-yard line. East and Dent, the senior that he is, up upset with himself that he didn't get a lead block on that play for Watrick. Vincent Smith comes into the ball game for the Indians. Smith's going to come in and play the fullback position, moves Dent back to tailback. Second down and 10, ball at the 37 of Southern Coffee County. Beecher takes a snap, hands it off to Dent, tries the right side, has got some running room, down to the 30, down to the 25, tries to stay on his feet, and falls down at the 20-yard line. Good carry by Dent as he got down there. He was able to get about two or three more yards after he kept his balance there, got his hand down to push himself forward. Good run by Dent. First down run by Easton Dent down to the 21 of Southern Coffee County as he comes out. Take a break for a play. Watrick into the game. Beechner comes in from the sideline from Coach Watrick. Great night for Easton Dent. He picks up the slack with the loss of his fellow senior running back, Adam Albertini. Got a helmet to the knee early on in that second period. Beechner in the pistol, set to his right, is Watrick. Ball's loose on the ground. Now he pitches it to Watrick late. <laughs> Watrick cuts back to the middle of the field, puts his shoulder pad down, and then they make a big negative yardage into positive as he gains a two yards on the play, second down and eight. Smart as he's play down. by Beechner. That's impressive. You know, the freshman in there, he was he's smart enough to know that he needed to get rid of that ball, and, and uh, Kaiser Watrick right in front of him took a little underhanded pitch. It's a good play by Beechner. Second down and eight. Ball now at Southern Coffee County, 18-yard line. Stone King up to the line of scrimmage. Morello left guard. Gib Carter, right guard. Peyton Norris, right tight end. Chandler Bradshaw, left tight end. Beecher in the pistol. Here comes the snap. Ball goes between Beecher's legs. Now he rolls to his right. He's got some running room. Back to the middle. He slips and falls down on the wet grass, and he's going to lose a yard. Beecher, seen him a lane, tried to cut back and slip down on the wet grass. Loses a yard. It'll be third down and nine. The ball spotted at the 20. Dent comes back into the game. Vincent Smith comes out. Beechner in from the sideline with the play. Breaks huddle. Dent at fullback. Watch your tailback. Third down and nine for the Indians at the Southern Coffee County. 19. Here comes the snap. Hand off to Watrick, right side. Tries to get to the outside. Breaks a couple tackles. Going to have positive yardage. He's going to bring up a fourth down 
and six as he gets down to the 17 yard line. I think we're gonna see a field goal. Boy, it'd be a long one. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody from the sidelines <laughs> figures that out too and hollers in that a field goal would make it 45 points, which would end the game. So it would be a long one. Yep, he is going to cut time out. Let's see if Coach Watrick maybe well, think can about see it. That. 258 left to go in the third period. 56 to 14. Timeout Indians. Let's take a 30 second timeout. You're St. Paul football and hot 105. Thirty second timeout, please. Fourth down and seven when we return from this timeout by Coach Watrick. I think he's two fifty seven left to go here in the third period, fifty six to fourteen. Indians lead. See Murillo in there. We'll see where he lines up at. Uh, I'd say Indians are going to put their offense back on the field. Fourth down and seven. I think you're going to try Murillo. Sure, looking it over. They are going to put they the team on the try, ground. Sure enough. Why not? As the Indians attempt, well, this B Mike going to put you in. So they're kicking at the 21. This will be a 31 yard field 30 goal. Yard, 31 yard field goal attempt by Murillo. Morello lines up. Here's the kick. Oh, oh, it's too short. Line drive kick. No good. Did not get his foot up under it where he wanted it. And the field goal is no good. Southern Coffee County will take over first in 10 from their own 17-yard line. Good idea. See? It's worth a shot. Morello's got the leg to get it sure there. Does. We've seen it. He just didn't get his foot up under the football enough. First in 10. Kind of like the spot here, Mike. They lose a couple yards. <laughs> First and 10 from their own 15. <clears throat> Southern Coffee County takes over on downs. 2.53 left to go in the third. 56 to 14. Indians lead here in the third period at Southern Coffee County. Southern Coffee County are in the eye. Handoff to tailback instantly wrapped up by Ethan Stone gain from that nose guard position. No gain on the play. That carry is Aiden Voorhees, a sophomore. Second down and 10. Back at their own 15-yard line. See if the Indians' defense can hold Southern Coffee County, pin them deep in their own territory, and get the football back. Second down and 10 for Southern Coffee County. Gluey in the pistol. Set to his right is Herrera. He awaits the snap. It's a high snap, but he reels it in, hands it off to Herrera. Herrera cuts back. Oh, Easton Dent and Chase Bradshaw smothering for no gain on the play. Second down at 11, or third down at 11. Back at their own 14-yard line. As Dent lays a hammer down again as Bradshaw gets in there first, but Dent comes, cleans it up. Third down and 11 back at their own 14. Gluey in the pistol. One receiver wide to the left. Herrera set behind. High snap. Goes nope. over Gluey's head. Back in his own end zone. Throws it just to no one. Should be intentional grounding from the end zone. There was no receiver out here. No flags on the play. Nope. Now there's a there flag. There comes in. That should be a safety if he threw that from yeah, his I own think it end should zone. Be, I don't he did it to avoid the safety, so it should be a safety. I don't know that they'll ever get that call, but it was fourth down. Now it is fourth down and 11. See what they call on the flag as it went over Gluey's head. He recovers it. It's about a yard deep in his end zone. Just you could tell he's under pursuit by the Indians and threw it away. It, yeah, is, it intentional is intentional grounding, grounding against Southern Coffee County. Boy, I don't know. I thought he was in the end zone. But. Half the distance to the goal, so it'll be fourth down and a mile for Southern Coffee County. Going to force them into punt formation back in their own end zone. Herod stands back about four yards deep. Now he scoots up. 
to about two yards deep in his own end zone. Wartrick stands at his own, stands at Southern Coffee County 38 yard line awaiting his punt. Here's the punt, it's away. Taken by Wartrick on the fly at the 36. Down to the 30, 25, he's got a little running room. Down to the 20 yard line, so another great return by Wartrick. First down and 10 for the Indians. Indians couldn't ask for a shorter field. They're deep inside Southern Coffee territory. I'll be able to get some points out of this. First and 10 from their own 19. From Southern Coffee 19. First and 10 for the Indians from Southern Coffee County, 19 yard line. Den at fullback, Watrick at tailback, Landon Beaster up under center. Here comes the snap. Watrick with the football. Up the middle he goes. Down to the 10 yard line. Good run on first down by Kaiser Watrick. Down to the Southern Coffee County 10 yard line. Second down and two for the Indians from the Southern Coffee County 10 yard line. Indians will put this one away if they can punch it in. Second down and two for the Indians from the Southern Coffee County 11 yard line. Need to get down to the nine for a first down. Landon Beachner. In the pistol, set to his right is Vincent Smith. Two receivers wide to the left is Watrick and Bradshaw. Yeah, and here's the flag. It's going to be a delay of game as Coach Watrick is trying to get everybody set. A lot of confusion on offense by the Indians as they try to get the right offensive set. It's going to be a five-yard penalty. It'll be second down and seven. Now the ball spotted at the 15-yard line. Second down and seven for the Indians. Beachner stays in the pistol, set to his right to Vincent Smith. Wide to the left, Kaiser Watrick and Chandler Bradshaw. Here's a snap. Beachner hands it off to Watrick, or uh, Vincent Smith. Vincent Smith, running room, dodges the man down to five, down to the four yard line. Well, I think he's going to get the first run down. By Vincent Smith, as he is down to the four, it'll be first and goal for the Indians. Indians spread Southern Coffee County out. Hand it to that slot back, Vincent Smith, and a great run as he sidestepped a couple of Southern Coffee County defenders and gets down to the five-yard line. First and goal for the Indians at the Southern Coffee County five. Nice 10-yard gain there by Vincent Smith. That's, That's the end quarter. of the third quarter. End of the third quarter score, Indians 56, Southern Coffee County 14. We'll be back after this one-minute timeout. You listen to St. Paul football on Hot 105. Get one minute. Back here in Leroy, Kansas, St. Paul got the ball at the five-yard line, throwing a pass. Oh, it's overthrown to Bradshaw from Landon Beachner as he took the snap. He rolled out to his right, had Bradshaw in the end zone, just threw it a little bit high over his head. That'll bring up second and goal for St. Paul from the five as they attempt to punch it in here and, and sew this one up, leading 56-14 to 14 with 11-54. Just started the fourth quarter here in Leroy. Indians had a decent game so far. They've had some struggles here in the second half. 
getting some points on the board, but they got a lot of younger players in there. Beechner steps up to the line of scrimmage again. Second down and goal. Beechner under center, takes a snap, turns around, hands it off to Kaiser Watrick, drives forward, gets down to about the two-yard line on a nice gain there by Watrick as it comes up now third and goal from about the two. Indians with a couple more opportunities here to punch it in and finish this one up. Well, everybody join us on the live stream. If you uh, wondered why the radio went off, everybody else is wondering too, but you can join us on the live stream and finish this off. Mike, you can say whatever you want on the All live right, stream. All right, let's go. <laughs> no, never mind. 11-23 left to go in the ball game. 56-14 Indians lead. They're trying to finish it off here. Second and goal from the three. I apologize for all the trouble on the radio. I have no idea what was going <laughs> on. Here, regardless, split back formation. Beechner up under center, and now the flag on the play. Is there going to be another delay game? Coach Roger tries to call a timeout. It's going to be a delay game. It's going to be third and goal from the eight. As the Indians with a five-yard penalty back up to the eight-yard line. 11.06 left to go in the fourth quarter, 56 to 14. Some of these young mistakes that you're going to see when the younger players are in there, it's all right, they've got to learn. And if you're going to have to learn, do it when you got a big lead like this. Split back formation, dent to the left, Vincent Smith to the right, Beechner up under center. Here comes the snap, Beechner's going to keep it around the right side, cuts back to center of the football field, spins away for one, and he's into the end zone, touchdown, Indians. And that is going to end the ball game with 11 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. 62 to 14 is our final score. Why they got to run an extra point? It's 45 what? points. That don't make I no don't sense. I don't know. Who knows? We just play along, Dan. Well, Coach Watrick. I'd go for two then. <laughs> 62 to 14 is they're saying they got to run an extra point, which. Well, it doesn't matter. We never have before, but 11 minutes left to go in the fourth, 62 to 14. So the Indians line up for the two-point conversion. Split back formation. Beechner up under center. Here comes the snap. Hand off to Vincent Smith. He leans for the goal line. Extra point is good. The score, final score now is 64 to 14. Indians finish off the Southern Coffee County Titans one minute into the fourth quarter. We'll be back with Mike's KW Trucking post-game stats after this two-minute time. Well, I guess we'll I have guess to we'll have a time out with this talk while I do some math here, Dan. We'll just go ahead and Mike, you do, the, you do the math. I'll and we'll go through it best I can, stream. and we'll talk about it, and we'll try to keep the live stream up, Patrick, and make sure you're getting it down there on the field for them. They're going to do the trophy down there, so make sure you're filming that. So, Yeah, everybody, uh, St. Paul is going to take the district title here. They already had that wrapped up previous to this game, but – St. Paul is going to accept the trophy here. That's good excitement for Coach Watrick and all the seniors on this team as well as the underclassmen. A lot of good playing time by the underclassmen here tonight. Good ball game put together by St. Paul and Southern Coffee County to finish off the regular season. St. Paul will play at home next Thursday night of the winner of Hartford. Well, not the winner of. Whoever the higher seed is, Hartford and or Wakefield. Wakefield set fourth in that district before tonight, but after tonight, Coach Watrick had the same opinion. He thought maybe Hartford would jump them in that fourth place position. So we'll see who the Indians will host. I'll run down the stats real quick, Dan, while we're getting ready for the trophy presentation. As, uh, again, this is unofficial stats, but uh, as near as I think I got it pretty close there, Adam Albertini didn't play in the second half. Hopefully he's going to be all right, but I know Coach Watrick just – making sure that uh, he's going to be all right for next week. So probably a good idea to keep him rested. But Adam had three carries uh, on the ground, rushing for St. Paul in the first half, 46 yards, two touchdowns. He also had an interception for a touchdown, returned a kickoff for a touchdown, also returned a punt for a touchdown. So five touchdowns on the night for Albertini, and he didn't even play a full half of football. Uh, Easton did, however, did play the whole game, and he was the, the workhorse. For St. Paul's, he had nine carries, ended up with 153 yards Great on the ground. Good Easton night Mike. by Easton Dent. We've seen that a couple of times this year where he's really stepped up when he needed to. He also had three rushing touchdowns, one for 16, one for nine, and one for 19 yards. Chandler Bradshaw had one carry, one yard in the first half. Kaiser Watrick came into the game, spent a lot of time on the field, and had some success, had a couple of losses, so it kind of hurt his net yardage, but he ended up with seven carries for 17 yards. 
And Landon Beechner stepped in at quarterback, did a pretty good job. Young man coming in there and get some experience playing varsity quarterback. Uh, you know, might have made a couple of things that he'd like to change going forward, but that's how he learned, and he did a good job, you know, coming back there and, and sticking with it. And not to mention the fact he had three rushes for 38 yards, which turned on a little bit of speed, also had two rushing touchdowns for the Indian. One, the last one to finish the game was an eight-yarder. He had a 21-yarder in the first half. And then Vincent Smith. Young man stepped up and played some offense for St. Paul. He had one carry, a nice one down there, got him in scoring position close to the goal line, one carry for 10 yards for St. Paul. So overall, pretty good night on uh, all levels by the Indians. If there's one thing that they're going to have to still work on, I think it's uh, their pass coverage, but uh, they made some adjustments in the second half and were able to put more pressure on the quarterback and try to keep that shut down as much as they could. I thought overall, pretty good game by the Indians. It's nice that they got to play a little longer because that's going to help them too. Good night to finish off here at Southern Coffee County as the football team is out getting set up for pictures for a district title for the Indians coming out of this District 1. They will face the number four seed in District 2 next Thursday night at 7 o'clock at Miles Field in St. Paul. Make sure everybody joins us next Thursday night in St. Paul at Miles Field. Come support the Indians next Thursday night, 7 p.m. kickoff against the number four seed out of District 2. There you go. Look on your live stream right now. You'll see a picture of the district champion, St. Paul Indians, out there posing for their photo with the trophy. And congratulations to the Indians on a nice victory, nice season so far. I want to thank Mike for joining me here in the cold weather, Mike. <laughs> good regular cool, season. Let's keep her going. Good time. Keep her going. I don't mind being cold if we're winning, so let's keep it going. All right. Thanks, everybody. Join us next week on the live stream at 645. You've been listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105.